This is TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And I want to let you know that the State of the Saints podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Over 2 million men worldwide have joined the movement for all their below the waist needs. Engineers for the last 18 months have perfected the greatest hair trimmer ever created, the Lawnmower 3.0. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. You can choose the Lawnmower 3.0 as well as other items by going to manscaped.com and you can also save 20% by using the promo code State of Saints. That's manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints and save 20% on the Lawnmower 3.0 as well as other Manscaped items. That's manscaped.com. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And thank you so much for checking out another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. And before I get started, I want to apologize to everybody. Uh, if my uh, voice sounds a little funny, um, dealing with a little bit of a cold. But nevertheless, uh, I want to say thank you all for tuning in. I uh, really do appreciate your time. And on this edition, we're going to be talking about quarterback, former quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. Can't believe I'm saying that. Drew Brees, uh, Drew Brees uh, comments and him talking about um, he didn't play 100 percent throughout the entire 2020 season. Um, But (laughs) I want to say uh, to everybody that is filing in, thank you very much for those that are part of the chat. Uh, If this is your first time checking out the State of the Saints podcast, thank you all so much. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Once again, uh, quarterback Drew Brees, uh, we know that uh, he is the most winningest quarterback in New Orleans Saints history, the greatest quarterback in New Orleans Saints history. I mean, it goes without saying. But uh, quarterback Drew Brees, for the first time since his retirement, uh, talked to the the local media, the New Orleans Saints media, uh, at a a Zurich Classic, uh, a stop on a PGA Tour that he took a part in. And Drew probably talked to the media, I'm going to say, about 16, 17 minutes. And uh, one of the questions came up about his health. And uh, this is what he had to say about that. And you, you had a number of injuries this year. We heard about a plantar fascia and a labrum. I mean, how serious were these things and how limited were you this season? There was, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. There was, I, only felt I only really felt good in one game. I only felt good in one game. Uh, from the perspective of, like, I, I had all the tools in my toolbox. Um, so, you know, is limited the word? Is, like, I, I just, I had I had a lot of limitations throughout the season as to what I could and couldn't do, and I recognize that. And, and that's really hard for a competitor. That's, that's really hard when you know what you should be able to do and yet you can't because of various injuries or things that are taking place with your body, you know. And... You know, some of those things are just kind of freak things, like, you know, tear a plantar fascia, you get, you know, damage in the shoulder, you get the broken ribs, right, the punctured lung, you, you get all this stuff that's going on, you, I, this abdominal thing that I was dealing with for pretty much most of the season that, as a quarterback, everything you do is rotation, and when you can't rotate the way that you want, you all of a sudden begin to accommodate in ways, and everything for you kind of narrows because it's like, well, I know I can't make that throw. I can't make that throw. I can't make that throw. So what's, what's now in my toolbox. So as you can see, uh, Drew Brees was dealing with a lot of limitations this past season. And, you know, to a lot of the Orleans Saints fans, uh, 
you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, frustration. Uh, a lot of New Orleans Saints fans are frustrated about how things turned out. Um, another year of success in the regular season, only for the postseason to come through and the Saints lay an egg. Uh, but you had a lot of individuals that are part of the Saints uh, fan base uh, inbox me and ask me what did I think about this. Uh, a lot of uh, people that were on this Drew Brees bandwagon um, after they seen uh, his comments were very, very frustrated and very angry because they're wondering to themselves, OK, if you know you had all this going on, then why the hell did you play? Uh, why didn't you allow the coaching staff to allow these other guys to play if you know that you were limited? And to be honest with you, it kind of um, it kind of validates a lot of people in the media, the national media, believe it or not, because a lot of them were saying that Drew Brees can't throw the ball down the field. Drew Brees can't uh, throw the long ball. And we got mad and we got frustrated and we we even, you know, what I'm saying cussed out some of the members of the national media. You know, I think my uh, exact quote was the national media can kiss my ass. Um, but when he comes out and he says stuff like this, it kind of validates them. And for them to actually, you know, see what we didn't want to see. Um, I look at this two ways. Uh, do I think that Drew Brees was being selfish? Yes and no. Um, I think that Drew Brees on one hand, uh, if you're limited, you know that you can't do so many things, certain things, things that made you that legendary quarterback, things that made you, uh, you know, an all-time great. Then why did you not allow the New Orleans Saints to go out here and try to work with Jameis and work with Taysom and try to help them lead the way and only um, use you in emergency situations? I just don't have any idea. Um but on the other hand, you can look at it like Drew Brees is a one hell of a competitor, him dealing with all of these things, but still he is willing to go out there and fight for his team. Um, I hate to say it, but when you don't win at all, nobody gives a damn about how hard that you work. Nobody cares about how many injuries that you fought through and all that kind of stuff. Nobody really cares. The only thing that people care about is the outcome. Uh, me personally, as a Saints fan, uh, I just believe this. This is this is the only thing that I'm going to say to you. Drew Brees has an ego. You know, for all those people out there that think that Drew Brees is Jesus Christ himself, walks on water, uh, heals the sick, raised the dead, um, he's not. Uh, Drew Brees is a, a quarterback uh, that believes in himself and has one hell of an ego. And anybody that don't believe that Drew Brees has an ego, uh, I encourage you to check out this situation. And I encourage you to check out a situation that happened in the wild card game of the playoffs a couple of years ago versus the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, it was a game in which Taysom Hill uh, was the best quarterback on the field. Taysom Hill was better than Kirk Cousins. And yes, uh, he was better than Drew Brees on this day. Uh, Taysom Hill was wheeling and dealing. He was balling out. He was dropping the shoulder. He was running. He was throwing a ball. He was doing all these different things. And Yes, I feel like if Taysom Hill would have stayed in the game as the quarterback on that day, the Saints would have advanced uh, to the next round of the playoffs. It was one play uh, that Taysom Hill came into the game, and I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about here because it was the biggest play the New Orleans Saints had in the game. It was a 55-yard pass to Deontay Harris. It was a 55-yard pass to Deontay Harris down the field. All right? You know what I'm saying? He didn't score on the play because Taysom, of course, uh, kind of short on the football, but you know what I'm saying? Deontay Harris caught the ball. And what did Drew Brees do on the next drive? On the very next drive, what did he do? He tried to throw the ball down the field. You know what I'm saying? Like something he didn't do all season long, only for the pass to be intercepted because he threw it into double coverage. That was what I like to call an ego throw. It was unnecessary. It was just the fact that the crowd was on their feet. They were yelling and they were screaming for Taysom. And I feel like Drew Brees let his, uh, he let his ego get the best of him on it. So do I believe that Drew Brees has an ego? Absolutely. And do I feel like his ego allowed him to play in some of the games in which uh, he shouldn't have? Absolutely. Just like the game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. There was no way in hell uh, Drew Brees should have been playing in a game. The only reason why Drew Brees played in that game is because that Patrick Mahomes was on the other side. And he knew this was going to be his last season. And he wanted to go up against Patrick Mahomes. 
because he knew that was going to be his last opportunity to do so. I don't think it had absolutely nothing to do with the team. And, oh, don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of blame to go around here because Drew Brees is only a football player. A football player is going to play. They're competitive. If you ask them are they hurt or can they play, most likely they're going to say yes. The all-time greats, I mean, you basically going to have to drag them off the field. Drew Brees is all-time great. Oh, you have to blame the coaching staff. You got to blame Sean Payton. You got to blame Sean Payton for hitching his wagon to Drew Brees so much that he is so blinded to the fact that he did not have all of the tools in his arsenal. And even if he even if he understood that he had all the tools in his arsenal, the fact of the matter is you shouldn't you you should not have allowed Drew Brees to take the field. You should have set Drew Brees down and said, "Hey Drew, look, I understand that you want to play. I understand that you're a competitor, but now isn't the time for you to play." And who knows, if he would have stayed out to like week 12, week 13, then maybe he probably would have been, you know, close to 100%. But the fact that he's saying that he only was healthy in one game and that was against the Detroit Lions, uh, don't don't get it twisted. I mean, Sean Payton and his coaching staff seen Drew Brees in the, in the rehab room. They seen him, um, you know what I'm saying, talking to the doctors. They seen him with the, with the tape, you know what I'm saying, with the flex tape on his shoulder. They know that he was dealing with some things. And the fact that they refuse to try to work with Jameis, the fact that they refuse to try to work with Taysom, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that kind of stuff right there divides a the locker room and pisses a lot of guys off. Yes, I said that. It pisses a lot of guys off, especially if you're a guy, you know what I'm saying, that, that wants to win. Like this, this, this isn't the Jets we're talking about here. This isn't the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a team that has won more games than any other team in the last four years. And this has been the deepest roster that this team has ever had. From front to back, this team has never been as deep as it was last year. And quite frankly, it probably won't be as deep as it was last year ever again. So when you go out there and you play Russian roulette, you know what I'm saying, trying to allow your quarterback to get that last ounce of, you know what I'm saying, that last ounce of uh, validation, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you know that he's going to retire just remember the people that are the casualties at war. Think about these individuals that, that you know what I'm saying, that are on your contract that are no longer here. Guys that could have helped the New Orleans Saints, and now the New Orleans Saints are f- trying to find ways to try to pick up the pieces from the guys that they lost. This is a, this is a huge pie, and there's so much blame to go around. Drew Brees, on one hand, I feel like he should have known that he was limited. The fact that you have to bring another quarterback in because you can't throw the ball down the field, I mean, that's pretty alarming right there. The fact that you have to bring a quarterback in to throw the ball past 20 yards is very alarming. The fact that you can't run an offense from start to finish and only for the, to the coach to take you out of the game if he tried to do a trick play speaks volumes. The New Orleans Saints, Sean Payton, Drew Brees are solely responsible for this particular situation. And me as a player, if I was a player, I would be a tad bit upset about this. I'm not saying that Drew Brees is not a competitor and I'm not saying that Drew Brees uh, doesn't need, doesn't deserve to go out uh, on his own, you know what I'm saying, volition. But what I'm saying is this is very, very selfish that you know that you're injured, right? You know what I'm saying? You know that you're injured, you know that you're limited and you know for a fact that you can't do some of the things that made you great, and yet you're still out here. And Sean Payton, look, I I get it, right? Y'all been together so long, and he's, you know, and and they have this old saying, I'd rather go with the devil I know than the devil I don't know. But at the same time, you probably could have been more successful. You probably would have got over the hump if you would have used some of these other guys and had the, the tough conversation with Drew Brees. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that Sean knew that this was Drew Brees' last season. And Drew Bre- and Sean Payton is extremely loyal. He's extremely loyal to his, to his uh, players. We've seen this before. Sean Payton will use a guy and, and bring him out on the field as long as he possibly can. You know what I'm saying? And he will try everything he can to make it work if he likes a guy. But in this particular situation, I think it cost the team a year of success. That's just my – humble opinion. But thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you uh, if you like what you're hearing so far, if you like the State of the Saints podcast, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know what you think. 
we're going to start with Demetrius. Demetrius says, if that's his mindset, then he is even more at blame. Yeah, I mean, look, I think he's a competitor. I think that Drew is tough. I think that he is determined. But in this case, I just feel like uh, he shouldn't have been playing. Mocha, thank you very much, says TJ. That's true. Drew said the Saints should have kept the momentum uh, going with Teddy Bridgewater. I think that was what it was supposed to be. I think that Teddy was supposed to be here. I think Drew was supposed to retire last year, but he didn't. He decided to come back, and because he came back, they you know they lost Teddy in the process. As a competitor, he he was always trying to prove a point. Well, look, I think we're all competitors, but at the same time, you got to really come to yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I helping or am I hindering my squad? And uh, speaking of, uh, thank you very much, Kimo. And speaking of Kimo, man, I want to thank Kimo uh, for uh, purchasing uh, his uh, State of the Saints podcast T-shirt, giving him a shout out, him and his wife uh, looking really nice right there, man, in their brand new State of the Saints podcast T-shirt. So shouts out to my guy, Kimo, and his wife. Uh, Thank you all for supporting the podcast, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Dietrich says, uh, great quarterbacks have egos. I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, that's true, but you've got to keep your ego in check. And if you can't keep your ego in check, then you need to have people around you to help you keep your ego in check. And I, I just don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't agree with, uh, his decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I respect this decision. I respect him for wanting to give it the old college try, but it just wasn't a smart decision. Jerry giving a shout out to Christ. Uh, James Jones says Breeze uh, is the is the reason uh, we still had a team. No need to drag him after he retires. Ain't nobody dragging Drew Breeze. You know, like this is the conversation because Drew Breeze spoke to the media for the first time since he retired. You know, and that's the thing right there, man. Like we need to stop with the bull. Like Drew Breeze is not beyond reproach. You know, like ain't nobody trying to drag him. You know, any. Anytime somebody says something about Drew Brees negative, it's always like we got to drag him. Like, man, look, Drew Brees in this particular situation deserves for us to analyze and, and talk about and address his comments. You know, I, I like Drew Brees. I respect Drew Brees. I think that Drew Brees is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. But at the same time, I mean, I think his judgment needs to be questioned in this case. Uh, Christopher says, how did the Bucks beat the Packers? Tom Brady threw three picks. He looked awful in the game, and Aaron Rodgers still choked. Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. You know, like they couldn't get the ball down the field. Aaron Rodgers uh, couldn't deal with that defense. And I always say, it, man, if you get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, uh, most likely you're going to win a football game because he's going to fold like a cheap tent. That's one thing about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, to me, uh, doesn't have that second gear. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that gear as a, as a competitor. You know, I just feel like when he realizes it's just not his day, his offensive line is, isn't blocking, he just quits. He just gives up. You know what I'm saying? And he doesn't, like, go that extra mile. He doesn't want to stand strong in the pocket and deliver that pass. He ain't going to do that. You know, so if you hit him and hit him often, most likely you're going to win the football game. Uh, Bucks call game, the house said Jameis Winston uh, started uh, during games, but good uh, be good in the playoffs. Yeah, I just think that if he probably would have got more reps with the team, he would have developed more of a chemistry with them. But I don't know what the heck was going on here. I don't know if uh, Sean Payton is a guy who is a, uh, you know, he, he's a very uh, cerebral individual. You know, you never know what uh, what Sean Payton is thinking. Sean Payton be thinking for years down the line. And I think a lot of the the main reason why he decided to not put Jameis in is because he wanted to, I think to me, I think he wanted to try to hide Jameis. You know, I, I really do. I really think he wanted to hide Jameis, uh, try to fix some of the, the the shortcomings that Jameis is dealing with so Jameis can be the quarterback for this particular moment. And I just feel like he would have he felt like it would have been one of those cases with Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater comes in, wins five games, people see him winning those five games, uh, and they want some of that on their team. So that's why Carolina ended up, you know, giving him a contract. And I think that he kind of seen the same situation with Jameis. Maybe he thought, okay, I can fix this guy. This guy's a first pick overall. He just went to a bad situation. If I can keep him, 
and you know what I'm saying, Drew retires and I can help him get better, then we have something here. So I do feel like, you know, I do feel like uh, he hid Jameis to a certain extent. So nobody could actually see the improvements that he was making from week to week. Now, I think that in the first game, you probably would have seen him struggle, but every other game, you probably would have seen him getting better and better. And because he's getting better and better, teams would have been calling his agent and he probably would have, you know, you know, the Saints salary cap issues that they're dealing with right now. I think they probably would have looked at that, you know, and be like, oh, man, we can't keep him. But now you look at him like, you know, he put himself in a position and, you know, they put them themselves in a position where they can actually afford Jameis. I think that had a lot to do with it. That's just that's just me. That's the way I feel about it. Ricky uh, says Drew Brees and Sean Payton both are selfish, but I get it. He wanted to honor Brees. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it, too. Uh, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that he wanted, like you said, to uh, allow Drew Brees to to uh, get, you know, his well-deserved flowers. Uh, but at the same time, I, I just don't like the move, man. You got to do what's best for the team, not the individual. Uh, let's be honest, though. Drew is the greatest quarterback the Saints have ever seen. Look at our quarterback before Drew. Yeah, but look, we need to eliminate that mind frame. That's not an excuse. You know, it's not an excuse. Like, you know, when we when people start criticizing Drew or saying something about Drew, people are quick to go back to, well, oh, Drew, the best quarterback that we ever had. Like, so? You know, like, that don't mean anything. That don't mean that the decision that he made wasn't was the right decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because you make a bad decision, all you know what I'm saying, just because of how how great you are, that doesn't that doesn't like you know erase the fact that you know what I'm saying that you made a bad decision. You know, I, I can't give him a pass for that. Yes, he is the greatest New Orleans Saint quarterback of all time, but that don't mean anything when you're out here being limited. You're basically you know causing a team. You know what I'm saying? You're causing a team like hardship. You know what I'm saying? You're making guys, making things harder for a team than what it got to be. Man, TJ, I'm mad all over again, bro. Breeze real selfish for this one. Hmm. A lot of people start uh, feel that way. I mean, a lot of people inbox me and were frustrated when they, when they heard this. Every team that the Buccaneers play in the playoffs and Super Bowl, except the Packers, uh, were riddled with injuries. Well, it's not their fault, you know. I mean that that ring still shine and that trophy still shine, so that's not their fault. Uh, Drew should have kept those comments to himself. Those comments just added to the frustration these last four years, four straight division titles, not a single Super Bowl appearance. Admitting your limitations uh, may make you sound tough, but it could have uh, been prevented this team from winning the ultimate prize. I agree with that. You know, I, I do feel like. Uh, yeah, you, you're tough and all that kind of stuff, but what does it get you at the end of the day? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're tough. You know what I'm saying? But people are like, oh, man, he's tough. But who cares? You know what I'm saying? A narrative is going to continue that the Saints can't get over the hump. You know, like, and they probably could have gotten over the hump if you would have sat down for a longer period of time. Like, you came back way too early. You shouldn't have came back as early as you did. If, if Drew Brees would have came back week 13 or 14, then I think that would have been fine. But to me, I just feel like he, you know, he came back too prematurely. And I just think that he just came back because of his ego. If you got to be doing all these different things just for you to get ready for Sunday, maybe you need to reevaluate things. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Drew did uh, hold us back two years, no cap. I mean, I won't say he held us back uh, for two years, but... I do feel like if you are limiting your team uh, from, you know, reaching their full potential, if you got wide receivers out here looking like slow, uh, if you got your running backs out here being limited, if you got your guys out here being questioned about can they run certain routes, yeah, I do think that's your fault. You know what I'm saying? I, I do. Makes me makes me reevaluate like every receiver or player of the team that, you know what I'm saying, that we that we question. Uh, Jared Cook lost the game with the fumble. Alvin Kam uh, Kamara, uh, Tanner, the, uh, I guess you're saying ran the wrong route. So Drew stunk the second half. The Saints stunk as a team. Um, 
I agree with that. You know, like they could have played a lot better, but at the same time, they they made it very very easy uh, for a defense because all the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did was play man coverage and set on routes. I mean, that's that's basically what it was. <laughs> like that's that's such an easy defense to play when you know that you have a quarterback that can't get the ball down the field. I mean, it, it, it's so easy to play them. So we can talk about uh, Jerry Cook, but if you had a quarterback that can throw the ball down the field and players can go vertical, it will be hard for a defense to actually scheme against those type of guys. So reason why that play uh, is a reason why that play by Jameis Winston to Traquan Smith work is because <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wasn't ready for, you know what I'm saying, any passes to be vertical. So if you were combined like short intermediate passes with explosive plays down the field, who knows what would have happened? They wouldn't have been ready for it. So I mean, you can you can combine Jerry Cook and all that kind of stuff, but at the same time, you have to ask yourself, uh, why the Saints, you know what I'm saying, couldn't couldn't punch it in on two goal line opportunity, two red zone opportunity. Deontay Harris put them in. In, in two really good situations, and all they got was six points out the deal. I mean, even if you were to score one of those touchdowns and kick the field goal, you still up 10 nothing. But they couldn't even do that. So I'm just wondering. I mean, I wonder why on goal line and red zone situations we're seeing more Taysom Hill and not Drew Brees. And when Drew Brees is in the game doing red zone opportunities, the Saints are not scoring. Interesting, right? Daryl says Drew played good in the regular season, uh, stunk in the playoffs the last couple of years. Yeah, that's true. I think he has held us back the past two years in the playoffs, but before he balled out every year. Yeah. <clears throat> Time waits for no man. John uh, John Doe says uh, Sharp Payton uh, gets his teacher's pet and then forces the issue. Force takes him on us, made Jimmy Graham the force of the offense all those years. Now has horses that run it back and still tries to run uh heel instead of AK. Well, I can understand why he wants to run Taysom Hill because it's a matchup nightmare. It's a it's a mismatch. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it the the defense doesn't know what to do when Taysom is in the game. And also, like with Alvin Kamara, I don't want to say he don't run him. You know what I'm saying? I think he runs him pretty well. You know, like I think they they, they understand like like it, running running back position is not how it used to be, right? Like when Emmitt Smith used to play. Emmitt Smith get about 30, 35 carries. But you know what I'm saying? Like running backs now is like based on touches, right? If you have a court, if you have a running back that runs the ball 10 times and catch the ball 10 times, you know what I'm saying? That's 20 touches. You know what I'm saying? That's equivalent to 20 rushes in a way. You know what I'm saying? He's still getting his hands on the football. So I just think that sometimes we look at, the running backs be like, oh, man, oh, yeah, it was 10 rushes. But you have to account those passes that he's catching out of the backfield or those passes that he's, you know, catching on those wheel routes or those angle routes. So he does use uh, Alvin Kamara. He just uses him in a different type of way than, you know, than a, I guess like the, the traditional running back. And also they need to use Latavius Murray a little bit more. I agree, with, you know, but Latavius can always have about 10 or 12 carries. That's just what it is because he's not the money-making running back. And when teams pay running backs, they're going to make them work. You know, they're going to give them the majority of the touches. Uh, playing hurt doesn't work well for the football team. No, nah, it doesn't. Especially, like, if it's like a, a lingering injury or something like that that caused you a little bit of limitation, but not to a point where it just completely, like, wipes out something that you do well. If it's doing that, then you need to sit down. Uh, Brian Davis says, did anybody hear about how did Michael Thomas' surgery go? Uh, I think he's doing just fine, man. Michael Thomas uh, is fine, man. So I think he'll be ready for a uh, training camp and everything else. Uh, we're on to something, and he decided to be selfish. Hmm. Uh, did you see Marshawn Lattimore cam footage that they released? Uh, no, I, I didn't see it. I ain't check it out. Probably not gonna check it out, man. I, I I don't know, man. I'm just I'm just over this whole you know police cam stuff, man. I, I'm over that, man. I, I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to see nothing like that right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm chilling. I'm I'm trying to give <laughs> I'm trying to give some show. I'm trying to do some shows and 
just try to give people something they can enjoy, man. I'm, I'm kind of kind of over the nonsense, man. I won't call it. Well, it is nonsense. I'm just tired of the foolishness, bro. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, folks. I apologize. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Roderick for the $5. He says, hey, uh, there, uh, what did I miss? Um, we talked about Drew Brees' comments. Uh, Drew Brees uh, talked to the media, uh, the local media for the first time, and he talked about him dealing with injuries throughout the season. TJ Saints would have uh, had Tom Brady last year. Saints uh, being Super Bowl, not Bucks. Teddy would have went to Bucks. Jameis would have went to Panthers. Well, would have, should have, could have, but it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, Goodell work. <laughs> That's a Sean Payton problem. <clears throat> Everything is working fine. Uh, there is a slight delay on YouTube. Okay. Uh, TJ, that sounds crazy. Alvin Kamara is the only offensive player at skill position to make four straight Pro Bowls and to make the Pro Bowl in every year of his career. Yep. Yeah, that's true, man. But he's an incredible player. Drew and Sean are to blame. Their egos and pride got in the way, and they both have uh, known it was time for adjustments. And if we give them praise while we succeed, it's only right that they get the blame now. And that's true. You know, like people would just want – people just want – uh, you to celebrate every single thing that a player does. Like, and if they do, you know, even if they're great, if they do something wrong, we want them to, you know, slide through the cracks because they are great. Not up in here. You know, like, I don't care. I don't care who you are. If you do something that I feel like is warranted a criticism, I'm going to do it. And I feel like it's, it's only right. Like, you don't get skins on a wall, you know what I'm saying, for – you know, questionable, you know, just because you got skins on the wall don't mean that you can't get questioned. And I don't know, man, that's that's the frustrating thing about this world now. You know what I'm saying? That we can't like, you know, ask questions or, you know, give constructive criticism about anything. And if we do, then people just automatically assume we hate that person. We don't like that person. We don't appreciate that person. I mean, that's just the world that we live in today. It's crazy. These nuts says uh, don't know who's worse. Uh, ATM with the, their comments, Breeze and Favre tripping. Well, uh, well, Brad Favre. I mean, he's just a in a whole nother, you know, category. I mean, he's entitled to his opinion. Uh, as far as Drew Breeze is concerned, man, I don't know. I just think that he could have he could have uh, stayed out a little bit longer. Jameis is a head case, but hopefully uh, he can be crazy good. If not, we'll get a high draft pick in 2022 and get a decent quarterback. Then right now we need a cornerback, wide receiver, and a a linebacker. Uh, None. Uh, I don't understand what you mean by head case. Please elaborate on that. Out of touch. Alvin Kamara is the most consistent running back uh, since being drafted from being consistently great receiving back and consistently good running back. I put Christian McCaffrey in the same category. Christian McCaffrey is the same way. I mean, I'm not going to like poop. I'm not going to poop poo on Christian McCaffrey because he plays in the same division. He's just as good as Alvin Kamara is. And some people would arguably say that he's better. Uh, Troy says uh, Drew shouldn't get all the blame. Peyton calls some uh, some bad plays and gets away from the run, even when it's working. Oh, no, nah, I, I said that. I said it's a... It's a if it was a blame pie, they both would be getting a slice. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just saying it's Drew. I definitely said it was Sean as well. Definitely got to uh, run the table this more. Nobody wants to tackle him all game. Yeah, and he's a good decision maker. I just think that uh, Latavius Murray just I, – I don't know, man. I don't know why people just don't like this guy. Inevitable says uh, we better hit on some of these picks because, honestly – I'm still not impressed with any of our picks from last year. Well, I think Adam Troutman was a good pickup. You know, I think he was good and solid. Uh, Cesar Ruiz, I think he'll play much better once he goes to his traditional uh, his, uh, position as a center. And uh, Zach Bond is the only one that's a question mark to me. Drew stayed longer and uh, than he should have to try to preserve his records. 
Mm, I don't know if he was trying to preserve his records. I, I think that he wanted to win a championship, but it was just a little bit too late. You know, I think the Saints waited too long uh, to try to put a team around him, unfortunately. Uh, only if our defense could have played in the playoffs like the regular season when we played the Chiefs, Saints defense was everywhere in that game. Yeah, they played about 90 snaps, man, and they still was out there balling out. Uh, Tampa, Florida, celebrate championship day, four championship, one season, all four spots. Okay, well, congratulations to them. Drew Brees and Tom Brady chase records. I don't know if that's true or not, but I tell you what, uh, Tom Brady is, if he's chasing records, he's doing them successfully. Uh, most passing yards. Sean Payton underutilized Ingram when he was here, traded up to get him and handcuffed him to uh, two other bags almost every year. Troutman uh, should have played way more this season. Azalone sucked. Vaughn got no run. Um, I don't want to say he underutilized Ingram. I just think that, um, to me, he used Ingram way too much in his uh, his rookie season. He still had, I think, I want to say PL was still on the team, if I am mistaken. Um, I think he used him a little bit too much. Um, I think that I think that Mark Ingram, the light came on to for him probably like around uh, year five. You know what I'm saying? I think that's when like he really started to take off. But it also benefited Mark Ingram because now Mark Ingram is 30 years old and he still has a lot of tread on the tire. So even though he doesn't play for the Saints anymore, he can go other places and still be a contributor. Um, I, I don't know what happened in Baltimore. I mean, it just like, I, I don't know. I don't know if they just wanted to go younger. But, I mean, a guy that had 14 total touchdowns the year before and then can't see the field the next year, like, huh? But hopefully in Houston, man, he gets some opportunities. I think that he's going to do really well out there. So I like Mark Ingram, man. I don't think he was underutilized. I think that uh, Sean Payton wanted to make him work. Uh, once he became better in blitz pickup and became a much better pass catcher because he wasn't that good catching the ball out the backfield when he first got here, that's when he got better. And before he left, like, the last three years of his career, uh, career as a Saint, I mean, he was one of the best screen runners I've seen since Pierre Thomas was here. So I don't want to say that he underutilized him. Yeah, Brad Favre just needs to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, he entitled to his opinion. I'll leave it at that. The cops realize uh, he played for the Saints. Uh, like I've hoped in Jameis Winston. Well, I, I, I believe I believe Jameis can get the job done. I'm not – I'm not um, – look – I don't know what, what's going to happen. I'm just not going to just completely dismiss a guy. I'm, I'm just not going to completely dismiss a guy because, you know, he had a bad season. You know, that don't mean that the guy is terrible. It don't mean he can't ball out. Sean got uh, that passing virus and won't run the ball when we supposed to. I don't say he got the passing virus. I mean, I, I won't say he got the passing virus, but um, I just feel like, I just feel like in certain situations, I do feel like he throws the ball when he doesn't have to. Um, but he has done a, a good job, like down the stretch, like late last season running the football. So I can appreciate that. And he's he's going to definitely going to have to run the football this season because now you have yourself a quarterback that's not familiar with the offense quite, quite yet. Well, Alvin Kamara uh, has been the top eight running back in every season of his career. McCaffrey has only been a top eight running back in 2019. It would have been in 2020 if not injured. He was not that in 17 or 18. Well, you can say the same thing about Alvin Kamara. Kamara wasn't the same thing in 19. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had a down season due to injuries. Uh, look, I, I like Chris McCaffrey a lot. Chris McCaffrey is just as talented as Alvin Kamara. I'm not going to dismiss that guy. And I think a lot of people don't appreciate him, you know, because, you know, he's a white boy doing this. You know, what I'm saying? like, you know, like it's just like like to me, it's like Julian Edelman, people like Jordy Nelson, Chris McCaffrey, you know, like, you know, these these some some white boys at, a, at positions where, you know, mostly like black guys dominate. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes because of that, they fly under the radar. But to me, 
this this dude can ball out. You know what I'm saying? Chris McCaffrey is just as good as Alvin Kamara. If you can't get Alvin Kamara and you end up getting Chris McCaffrey, I think a team would be just fine. I I I, I think that Chris McCaffrey is a, an extremely talented running back uh, that has really good field vision, uh, that has uh, really good hands, and he's a smart football player. And uh, I, I don't think that he gets appreciated, you know what I'm saying, as much, you know, you know, as as most of these other running backs. His 2019 campaign, I mean, he was being mentioned among greats like Jim Brown. So you got to put him somewhere in the conversation, right? Uh, on the treadmill with the headphones, but here, TJ. And hey, I appreciate that, Damian. Thank you, man. Uh, V-Law says a lot of Drew's prime years – were wasted in those years with terrible defenses. I agree. I agree. But, you know, when you become the highest paid quarterback during that time, team got to make sacrifices. And the off- offensive line was one of those things, right? Jamal, uh, Jamiah Bushrod had to go. Uh, uh, Carl Nix had to go. Jonathan Goodwin, you know what I'm saying? Like these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they were like cap casualties because of it. So, you know. And, and, you know, and also you didn't have like the right front office people at the time. So it happens. Uh, but I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast and thank to our sponsor, Manscaped, uh, with the first pick of the 2021 men's grooming draft. The Ball Saxonville Saguar select Manscaped, the leader in below the waist grooming. Uh, look, looks like Mel Kuyper gave an A plus because the pick is a major upgrade for the Bush defense. For all my NFL fans, I have an exclusive offer for you. You can save 20% off of your purchase by using the promo code State of Saints. That's all one word, State of Saints, and you will save 20% off your purchase. So go to manscaped.com, use the promo code State of Saints, and you will save 20% off. Now back to the comments. Tony says, on the other hand, it may be time for your fans to break out the paper bags. Uh, Tony, uh, seriously, man, you're a Falcon fan. I mean, enough said. Enough said. I ain't even going to get into that. McCaffrey uh, like that. Yeah, McCaffrey is very good. Uh, I think that uh, this will be uh, more run heavy uh, next year due to the pickup of a full back from Carolina. That dude is good run blocker. Then you know, You're running the ball will open up the field for James. I Look, you better run a football. You, you better run a football because now you have a quarterback that's known for throwing interceptions. So you, you got you to gotta be able to have a balanced attack. Jules says, if I was a Saints fan, Taysom Hill wouldn't start. I remember him playing in Denver and Philadelphia. I don't understand how anybody in their right mind uh, would think that Jameis Winston is not a better quarterback than Taysom Hill. I, I really don't. I, I I don't go that far all the time. And like I said, I apologize, folks, my, for my voice. Uh, but anybody that believes that Taysom Hill is a better quarterback uh, than Jameis Winston, we don't need to talk about sports together. Like you, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't make me believe that Taysom Hill is a better quarterback than Jameis Winston. You got to be high to believe that. Like you got to be on drugs to believe that like there's nothing about Taysom Hill is better for the exception of his ability to run the football as a, as a run, as a, ca- a carry of the football. Yeah. When it comes to quarterback, he's not even in the same room as Taysom Hill. I mean, as Jameis Winston, not even close, not even close. Like I, I really don't understand or see what anybody is, is, is missing. The only, the only thing that people have, about Jameis is the fact that he threw those interceptions. But before that, I mean, his in a touchdown interception ratio was pretty normal. It's pretty normal. He had one bad season and everybody just hitching their wagon to that. Like Taysom, man, I like Taysom a lot, but Taysom is not better. Taysom is not better than Jameis Winston. I, I don't know why anybody would believe that. I, I just, I don't have a clue. I don't. I like Barton, though. Uh, he had a lot of potential. Uh, Ball Saxonville. 
I think uh, that Jameis will fit in quite nicely with the Saints offense, already made new quarterback, always uh, do in the same uh, Saints offense. I agree. Well, Taysom is a better Swiss Army knife. Yeah, that's about it. That's it. But as a quarterback, he is not. Jameis, 43 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. I, I'm not sure. Jameis is a first pick overall for a reason. Falcon fans still 28 to 3. La La Land translations still suck. First of all, picks always goes to bad teams. Exactly. Brad Favre lost some respect for me. I look, I don't really follow Brad Favre like that. Um, I, I don't know why anybody would be surprised that he would have that type of mind frame. Um, I really don't know. But it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like that that's his that's his way of thinking. So, you know, he he showed everybody who, you know, what he all about. You know, he gonna probably gonna lose some friends in the process, but if that's the way that he feels, that's fine. But I, I don't wanna look, I don't wanna go into all that, man. That that's the kind of stuff to me that divides us, you know, that makes us uh, look at each other funny. I don't want I don't wanna roll with that, man. Look, Brad Fall has his beliefs. It's like we have our beliefs. All of us believe that what we believe is right. <laughs> you know, but what what can you say, man? I mean, he believes that. That's, the, that's just his mind frame. So, hey, TJ, I know it's irrelevant, but if the Saints would have beaten the Bucks, in your honest opinion, do you think we would have beaten the Packers? Um, I think it would have been a close game. Uh, but, yeah, I think we would have beat them. To everyone who's dismissing Jameis, then Drew uh, get a second chance at his career, and what was the outcome? Enough said. Pretty much, you know. I don't understand, I don't understand why anybody would, would criticize him. I, I really just don't get that. Uh, but folks, uh, I do apologize, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the show. Uh, my voice is completely shot right now. Um, just wanted to give you all a show, get your perspective and thoughts on um, the comments by Drew Brees. Uh, but thank you all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com, search the State of the Saints podcast. Also, facebook.com, search the State of the Saints podcast. And also check out the brand new podcast. If you're into HBCU football, if you're into the Southwestern Athletic Conference, check out the State of the Swag podcast that is available right now on YouTube. You go to youtube.com, search the State of the Swag, and it's also available on Facebook as well. Thank you all so much. And until next time, all I got to say is, who that?